Hey, Teddy here. Guess what? I have finally reached even more than 50 subscribers. Hooray! I just want to thank everyone for subscribing to me for today. And hopefully I can get up to over 100 subscribers someday. Now today I've got some sad news I've just had a lot of important things to address. Now the first thing that I'd like to get off my chest will be some sad news that I have to share with you guys. Now for anyone who's been wondering about what's going on with casual reviews with Bear Rimshot right now, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure you're all wondering what's going on with casual reviews with Bear Rimshot right now. Now, in case if you're all wondering what's going on, what's been going on with Nicholas Sancho and his part of casual reviews with Bear Rimshot, well, um, I'm sad to say this. Um, unfortunately, Nicholas Entra unfortunately resigned his position as editor of Casual Reviews with Bear Rimshot. Not he doesn't like to be with me at all, it's just that, well, it, it, he has other things to do in life, and plus, he's, he's been having transportation issues. Now, don't worry, people. Nick and I are both still good friends and all. It's just that while well, he has other things to do in life, unfortunately. However, I did manage to find someone who can help me edit my series. In fact, there are two people that I have been interested in helping me edit the series. However, I think I know who's going to help me edit the rest of the series beginning with the episode I'm working on right now. And that person who will be helping me, who will be my new editor for Casual Reviews with Bear Room Shot, is Ethan Brown. Now for those who don't know who Ethan Brown is, he's a really good friend of mine, I have to say. So anyways, uh, hopefully he doesn't do the same exact bullcrap as what Azuchi Guardian did when he was my editor. So anyways, I've got more sad news I have to share with you. Over the past two months, we've lost two important, I mean three important Star Wars people, including Kenny Baker, the voice of R2-D2, as well as the original voice of Admiral Akbar, who is also the original voice of Bib Fortuna, forgot his name. Anyways, as well as an actor who played one of the Stormtroopers in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Anyways, we've also lost Anton Yelchin. For those who don't know who Anton Yelchin is, you guys may know him more as um. You guys may know him more as um. You may, you may know more in the more recent Star Trek movies. However, he also was in the Smurfs as well as in the American dub of Ardman's The Pirates Band of Misfits. Anyways, just recently I heard the news on Facebook about of how that Gene Wilder unfortunately passed away. Now, for those who don't know who Gene Wilder is, you guys may know him more as Willy Wonka from Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory. Now, I bet we can all agree that nothing can top Gene Wilder when it comes to Willy Wonka. Anyways, he also did star in some young Frankenstein films in which Mel Brooks did, as well as Gene Wilder also did star in one adaptation of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. And no, people, I'm not talking about the Disney cartoon version. I'm talking more about one that came out in 1999. You know, the one that also that the one that also has Christopher Lloyd uh, the, we're talking about the one that has Christopher Lloyd and we may remember him more as Doc Brown from Back to the Future and Judge Doom from Who Framed Roger Rabbit as well as Miranda Richardson and whom who you may have known her more as Mrs. Tweety from Chicken Run. So anyways, um... Now that I got all my sad news out of the way, I've got a lot of important things I have to address with you people.
people. Now the first thing I must get off my chest would be regarding to the creator of vaulting himself, Morgan Ledger. And I know what a lot of you are all probably going to be thinking right here. Oh, how dare you talk about Morgan in, in your videos. Okay, okay. Just calm the fridge down and at least bear with me for once. Alright? So anyways, um, the first thing regarding to Morgan Ledger has to address hmm, would come down to this. Now, in case if you all, in case if you all have not, in case in case if you all have not noticed, back, in case if you all, in case if you all have not noticed, back when I did my final monthly update vlog, back in June two thousand sixteen, and which is also the last time when I did an update vlog. Period. I've talked to. I did get to talk about Morgan Ledger's departure from Mr. Coat and Friends. Your guys' reaction to it were all negative. Now, look, people. There is a good reason why I've had to talk about Morgan Ledger's departure from Mr. Coat and Friends. Now, the reason why I've had to talk about it is that well, how can I put this? Alright, the reason why I've had to talk about that is because, well, when I first heard the news that Morgan Ledger is going to leave Mr. Coat and Friends, um, I just, now when I first heard the news that Morgan Ledger will no longer be a part of Mr. Coat and Friends, I just, now, now when I first heard the news that Morgan Ledger will no longer be a part of Mr. Code and Friends. I just knew that I've had to somehow talk about it, considering of how sad and I, as a fan of vaulting, personally felt when it happened. As Morgan, I will say he is a great entertainer, I have to say. So anyways, um... Which is pretty much the same reason why I've had to talk about Disney Infinity's cancellation, back in May 2016. Which is basic, considering the fact, well, I just knew that I have had to talk about it, considering of how sad and I, as a fan of Disney Infinity, personally felt. So anyways, um... So anyways, um... And a second thing regarding to Morgan Ledger I also have to address would be regarding to the fact that what caused me to lose my friendship with Morgan Ledger was all thanks to the anti semite of crossover media himself, Mr. Ben. I know a lot of you are all shocked to hear about the fact that, um... I know a lot of you may seem to feel all shocked about the fact that Mr. Ben was the one who really ruined my... Caused me to have a bad, caused Morgan to get bitter with me instead of myself. But it's unfortunately the truth. At least bear with me on why, on how Mr. Ben can possibly ruin my friendship with Morgan Ledger. Now it all started way back in two thousand, in class in two thousand thirteen, right? Anyways, um, one day I was home with I was home on a weekend, right? Anyways, um, I was. I was, I was posting a video on Morgan's Facebook page, right? In which, in this case, it was a Dr. Seuss related video. Considering the fact that I knew how much Morgan loved Dr. Seuss, heck, I, I myself am also a Dr. Seuss fan myself as well, which is why I like hanging out, like socializing with Morgan. So, anyways, um. So, anyways, um. When my mom found out that I did post a video, post a Dr. Seuss related video publicly on Morgan's Facebook page, which in this case it was the epic rap battles of history episode, Dr. Seuss versus William Shakespeare, this is a moment where my mom got so unhappy, so much so that after she told Mr. Ben about it, every time whenever I'd be in session with Mr. Ben, even if I did get to have a third person in the room, with me and Mr. Ben. This is a moment where Mr. Ben would then get negatively fixated over that. 
that as well as to other things as well. Including... Including... Two other... Do we be one of those things that... That he would get negatively fixated against me for doing as well. Two other things I did was Mr. Ben would also hold grudges against me for doing, which he'd constantly bring up, include, of course, well, back in April 2013, when I, back when the Boston bombing just happened, I was praying, I prayed for Ruth Fernandez to go to jail. Well, that's because, well, that's because in real life, when I was going to school at Andrews with her, she used to do some illegal things, including destroying, including cutting a wire of my iPod charger, as well as constantly false reporting, constantly false reporting in general, as well as trying to terrorize my company, in which she think, in which she foiled that in doing. The reason why I would ever consider praying for Ruth Fernandez to go to jail is, is considering the fact, well, I, one day I was in the car with my mom, right? My mom was driving me home, and there she did get to inform me about of how that, that there was once a student at Edenwald who did go to jail when fall, by false reporting for at least dialing 911, and that's what brought my attention to that moment. Anyways, um, as well as, of course, regarding to my character choices, which, which I think he must be fearing, I think he's just scared about the fact that I would focus more on nothing but babyish characters, which really what Dante and I were both meant to focus more on in terms of like cast of characters are typically more family oriented. We would try to do things the Disney way. And by that, think of what Disney would do in terms of buying other companies. Now when you guys take a look at a company like Disney, whenever they want to buy a particular buy another franchise or company, it would usually have to be something that's family oriented. Now the now, now the reason why I would not approve of having neither Barney nor the Teletubbies nor the Care Bears nor um nor um nor My Little Pony in Epic Battles nor anything from Nick Jr. nor Playhouse Disney is pl is pretty much the same reason, but instead. I would approve of things like the works of Dr. Seuss, Winnie the Pooh, the Disney sequels, the Star Wars prequels, the 90s Booth films, Rita Rabbit, Clue Fighters, and Jumps. I would definitely be the same reason why Disney would consider of buying Marvel, Star Wars, the Muppets, and Power Rangers instead of buying things like Thomas the Tank Engine. Which, which the characters that Dante and I were both trying to include are more family friendly. So, anyways, um, speaking of facts that people, I guess, um, and also, um, if you guys do not even know who the fridge I'm talking about, then you people are all obviously lucky. Because Mr. Ben is somebody whom you people should never listen to if you ever want to get to know more on me creatively, particularly with the epic battles side of the spectrum. As, let's just face it, people, he, do <clears throat> he doesn't even know how crossover media works. And heck, he doesn't even know my what my character choices are. He doesn't even know what are my character choices like? And heck, he doesn't, and hell, he doesn't even know, um, how can I put this? Oh, right. <clears throat> he doesn't even know, um, all right, he doesn't even know how Epic Battles all started. You want to know? 
how did epic battles all started? It technically, you you, 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 you want to know when epic battles all originally started? Well, it all started way back when I was still going to school at Ardsley, and not when I was going to school at Andrus. And when I started doing epic battles, I was still in fourth grade at the time when it happened. Considering the fact that it all started when I went to a bar mitzvah of a cousin of mine. And when, uh, and when, and when my cousin Robbie had his bar mitzvah, that's what got me to co-create the Epic Battles franchise. Or a series anyways. Um... And, um, and when it comes to the world of crossover media, I'm pretty sure a lot of you, including you and Mr. Ben, in case you happen to be watching this, to know that, that there is already a major difference between a first-party crossover and a third-party crossover. However, one thing about the world of crossover media I'm surprised to see not a lot of people talk about would be the difference between about the fact that there is a major difference between a profit crossover and a non-profit crossover. A profit crossover is basically the kind of crossover where characters from two different where a profit crossover is basically the kind of crossover where um it's basically where you would have you would understandably have to get permission from the rightful owners to use a to be able to use a particular character. Like let's just say if you want to do like let's just say a third party crossover for example. A lot of crossovers that I'm sure people may find to be already familiar with, with the likes of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Wreck It Ralph, the Lego Movie. Super Smash Brothers, Kingdom Hearts, Epic Mickey, Disney Infinity, and Lego, Lego Dimensions, and House of Mouse, and all that stuff would all consider to be profit. As if Disney was going to use, like, let's say, either a second party character or a third party character, this is the moment where the companies would have to get permission to use a particular character. To use certain characters they want to use. And a non profit crossover. Is basically the kind of crossover where care is basically where um is basically where you technically don't have to ask for permission to use a particular character. However, you cannot. However, you have to know that. However, you have to know that. You, Cannot make any money off of what you're of everything you're using, and you also cannot illegally claim rights to their to the things you obviously don't own. And epic battles would be considered more non-profit, and I bet you're all wondering where would casual reviews of Bear Rimshot go. Well, when speaking about like lots to say using clips from another video, or when speaking about, like, let's just say, using clips from a movie, or another video, or a game, or even using a particular song, or whatever, this is the moment where things would go all non-profit. Though the only thing that would have been considered profit would be, of course, like, let's just say, if I want to bring in any reviewers, to my show in the future. Which I'm gonna address more about later. Anyways, um I will say this that though for me to be able to do a cover review with someone and bring any reviewers in, in any future episodes, not only does he or she need to have great talent, but also I have but also the reviewer and I both have to come into at least some form of agreement here and there. Because if the reviewer and I don't agree to do 
So then, I can't use it for casual reviews if they ever shot at all. However, um, the when I if I want to like let's just say include a particular review on Topic Bells or or even someone from my lifetime or a character from another movie or a TV show or a video game or a book or a comic book or whatever, this is the moment where I would do like what just like what Rebecca Parham once did when doing a cartoon featuring some Mr. Conan Friends contributors. And for those who don't know, and yes, people, Rebecca Parham did do a cartoon without the involvement of any Mr. Conan Friends contributors featuring featuring Mr. featuring some reviews from Mr. Conan Friends, at least as of that time period. And speaking of facts that people don't get the first time when they hear it, it's um it's basic another fact that I also have to address well another thing I also have to address would be of course regarding to the fact that yes people as my former editor Azuchi Guardian did ruin Jaime Tude's birthday last year. Now I'm pretty sure when you guys first received the news that Azuchi Guardian did ruin Jaime Tu's birthday. I'm pretty sure a lot of you, I'm pretty sure none of you would ever expect something like this to happen. Well, guess what, people? I am not gonna blame you. I'm with you guys. I honestly would never expect something like this to happen either, but unfortunately it did. Huh. Kind of reminds me of what happened in my bar mitzvah. What happened when I had my bar mitzvah? So anyways, I'm definitely going to show you guys proof that Azuchi Guardian ruined Jaime Toots' birthday last year. And when you guys do get him watching, oh dear god, it's going to get really, really painful. And it's really going to hurt not just me, but also you guys as well. So anyways... Welcome to the fourth episode of our data log series. Hmm. Anyways, where we explain what's going on within the Black Sun Cinemas community. First thing to announce is this. Without further notice, all future episodes will run in this pattern. All odd episodes will have a host. Don't mind that, but it's your show. Anyways, um... <clears throat> like you saw in episodes 1 and 3 that featured either DBX or Zuchi Guardian, but even in, but in, like you saw in episodes 1 and 3 that featured either DBX or Zuchi Guardian, but in even episodes you'll just get this newsletter. This is just because of timing and work. Understandable, we, we do regret any misfortune this plan has brought towards the viewers. Just makes things easier. Understandable. <clears throat> for our second update, we like to mention how grateful we are for those who supported our latest video bombardment. I mean, bombardment of Light 4. It's odd we never thought it would make a comeback, comeback from development hell. We plan on releasing the DM port as soon as tomorrow. 
Well, in, the, in case if you're wondering what I think about the bombing, bombardment of life for, well, at least you did not get to use my name at all in there. That's for sure. <clears throat> For our third update, we made some new friends over the internet. It's possible we may do collabs with them in the future. Do see their vids. For there is needing of them, as we are. Speaking of which, that's not our only need. Which brings us, which brings us to the next page. Well, I wonder what you have to say. Our fourth update is, please donate our Patreon and social work PayPal accounts. Unlike more successful video makers, we struggle to make ends meet both in, on our projects and reality. We would glad if you took your time and spare us a dime. Sadly, no percuss of low budget. Sorry, Zooch. I ain't going to pay you any money at all. As... As you're, as all you do, as when, as you just create a Patreon page, just to make videos, just for the sake of money, which I don't even do, anyways. <clears throat> Our fifth update being, we've recently received some offers. To work on other projects for other users. Hopefully that's not a bust like the last two jobs we had. Hopefully we get something out of, out of it this time. You can expect these projects to be released as soon as January 2266 or in this case 2016. Well guess what Izuchi? Nobody's... <clears throat> guess what Izuchi? Nobody wants to work for you. So anyways. Now for the sixth update. What's our reaction to the recent outlash from our former video partner, Bear Rimshot? Just four words to share. Let trolls be trolls. Well, guess what, Izuchi Guardian? I'm not, I'm not the one being the troll. You're the one being a troll, you sick nerf herder. So anyways, it's no surprise that he would bash us in the public eye. But it's shocking to see that he would make lies about us. Okay. Well, let me be clear with you, Izuchi Guardian, that I try to be honest with myself. And sometimes, Izuchi Guardian, you need to learn to accept criticism. Look, I know it's hard to accept criticism, but unfortunately, it's life. <clears throat> the reason being is that he claims to detest lies, regardless of who said it, or even if it's white or red. Believe him if you wish, but is it true? According to the evidence, no, it actually isn't. You can deduce that yourself, that, but we'll explain more. Well, I'm, I'm just telling you, Zooch, I'm really being honest with myself. First lie he mentioned was, Everything Izuchi stated in our last episode was a total hoax. To use as a scare tactic against him to shut him down. Izuchi was actually honest. No, you were not, Izuchi. You lied. And he was fired from casual reviews and can prove it. Well, guess what, Izuchi Guardian? Newsflash! I'm not the one who got fired. You're the one who got fired, Izuchi. Izuchi. Garbage, or should I call you Azuchi Fraudian? 
Terminator Kitty 0706, JD Turk, they're all dead also. Look, people. Look, Azuch. I know I may have you told this before, but Terminator is not dead! Whereas for Kitty 0706, as for Kitty 060, as for Kitty 0706 and JD Turk, I guess they were for not sure who JD Turk is, but I'll take your word on Kitty 0706. Second, the, the second lie was stating that Zuchi mentioned him as the demander. I'm very sure Zuchi mentioned that Rimshot's fans were making demands. Well, guess what, Zuchi? Sometimes, uh, look, as I said before, sometimes in Zuchi Garden, you need to learn to accept criticism. For Rimshot to say that he only shows that he has no fan base at all. Either that or he's just retired. Perhaps both, he, he's very forgetful which was an issue. Well, guess what, Izuchi? I, I technically do have a fan base. You're the one who has no fan base at all, and you're the one being retarded, not me. You sick bozo. And I ain't forgetful at all. And technically, Izuchi, I do have a fan base. You're the one who has no fan base at all, and you're the one who's retarded, who just don't even know what the fridge he's doing. Anyways. Why? Because one time he yelled at Izuchi for refusing to add something in Casual Reviews Episode 1. When Izuchi rechecked the script, it didn't exist at all anywhere on site. Well, technically it does. It's just, well, some, it's just that, well, Zuchi, guess what? Three simple words. Go. Get. Glasses. So he blamed Zuchi for his own mistake just to look good for his imaginary fan service. Look. Again, when when I when I do when I do projects like Epic Battles of Casual Reviews of Baron Shot, I only listen to what what the real fans have to say, not what what imaginary fans have to say. I think what you don't get is Uchi Garden is that the fans that I listen to are the real fans. Well, that's because well the reason why people would criticize over the last canon episode of Casual Reviews of Baron Shot, not only is it the factor that in, the jokes just make no connection to the subject matter. And plus, not everyone can handle not everyone can handle adult language. Man, man, is Azuchi Guardian such a big nerf herder? And I don't blame my mistakes on other people. I'm when I make mistakes, I, I would be responsible for them. You're the one who's, who often blames me. His mistakes on other people, you sick nerf herder. Next on the list is fan service reception. Sure, everyone has their own opinions, but does it have to contain disdain for others out of stupidity? You may dislike the kitty tribute, but no reason to go hating on Izuchi for showing his respects. Would you say fuck you to someone? Reason to go hating on Izuchi for showing his respects. Would you say fuck you to someone visiting a cemetery? No. Well, the... <clears throat> okay. Look, Izuchi. Nobody's saying you're wrong for liking Kitty 0706. If you like Kitty 0706, go ahead and like Kitty 0706 for crying out loud. And you say... And, and nobody's trying to make me feel stupid at all. You're the one who's... You're the one who's trying to make people do stupid, including me, stupid things.
what I find the ignorant, what I find ignorant is that none of the viewers thought Kitty 0706 was worth the trouble of tributing. Yeah, G Warrior somehow deserves it all. Justin wastes his life. Live with it. The person who throws their life away is someone who should disregard. Also, Zuji didn't like him anyways. Oh, so you say you wouldn't say fuck you at someone at a cemetery? Well, you just did that right now to Juwario. And you've done it to a lot of amazing people that I've paid a tribute to in my update vlog. Since I remember hearing you mention your fifth holy unholy update episodes that update vlogs suck. And if you don't like Juwario, that's fine with me. I'm not going to hold anything against you. But please respect those who like him. How does a suicide victim get more attention or, or respect than the terminally ill? Because he practiced the same faith as a community? Now that's fucking bull- Now that's fucking bullshit. Now you know what's fucking bullshit? <clears throat> now, now you know what's fucking bullshit, Azuchi Guardian? You can't just leave me alone for once! And, and, and you know what else is fucking bullshit? You can't even accept- <clears throat> And you know what else is fucking bullshit? <clears throat> You can't even accept criticism! And you can't even handle the truth about things! A community who only shows compassion towards one of their own, even for no reason, is not worth our time. Well, guess what? Newsflash! If they like Juario, they'd like Juario. And if you don't like Juario, you don't like Juario. And that's fine with me that you don't like him, but please respect those who don't like Ju who like Juario. Like, for example, sure, I may not be someone who, who likes Drake and Josh, but if they like it, they like it! And that's that! And when Timinator died, no one gave a shit. If you had seen our past videos with him, then why can't he also receive your compassion? It doesn't matter anyway, go ahead. Think what you want, however, it doesn't mean you are right. Why did, why did Zuji even take on the job to begin with? Well, technically, you're the one being the wrong, and I'm the one being right. And, Tim, and as I stated before, Timinator is not dead, okay? The reason why Tim doesn't see you anymore is that you often... What Tim told me is that you every time whenever he's with you, Zuji Guardian... You always take away his alone time from playing video games. For Christ's sake. And if you don't want to be Jewish, fine with me. You can be whatever religion you want. Maybe because he saw opportunity to get back as the other guy we worked with. It's too bad the Barons have turned out to be more of the same. Now that was a waste of time. Well, you know what's a waste of time? You off. All you do is. Every time you upload a new episode of Unholy Updates, all you do is harass me to do this, or do that, or, or that, or that kind of bullcrap. And no, Izuchi Guardian, Tim is not meeting, is not gonna see the video punk at all. As, guess what, Izuchi Guardian? Newsflash, Tim is on the same page, is still on the same page as you when it comes to the tornado. It's just. That, well, yeah, so anyways, that's only scratching the surface for Ramsha mentioning much of the other faults that us that only question his skills. Well, don't look at me, Azuchi Guardian. It ain't my fault that I would do that bullcrap. It's your fault, Azuchi Garbage. How does the show here suck ass? Sure, someone may say that his opinion, someone say that's just his opinion, but it's not even credible for uh, he didn't think it, it during the collab. One word for you, Baron Shad, unedited. Well, um, well, ten, well, whether you believe it or not, Azuchi Guardian, even if I may have someone still help me with editing casual reviews with Baron Shot, I've yet to learn how 
to edit a video soon by also making parody videos. Anyways, the last episode wasn't edited for time constraints. That's not only, that's not the only thing I have to counter with. Well, guess what? I did think about it. You're just blaming on um, other people. Anyways, the show is also still new, so it's still subject to experimentation. Well, since we lost the right to work on other shows, just responding to you, just responding to you boils my blood. Well, don't look at me as a guardian. It's not my fault that you lost your job as cat. It's not your. It's not your fault for ruining casual views of bear. I'm sorry, it's your fault. Also, our video resolution is better than yours, if you ever notice. Well, guess what, Azuchi Guardian? LIAR! If you haven't, we can also make this series live. Well, guess what, Azuchi Guardian? You can't! You don't even know what I'm doing. All you do, Azuchi Garbage, is to make videos just for the sake of money. I don't do that crap at all. Now, the reason why I personally want to make a video you know what boils my blood even more? That you would that you would constantly claim that I would make videos just for the sake of money. Newsflash, I don't do that stuff. You're the one who makes videos just for the sake of money. My reason why I want to make videos is to entertain people, to enlighten people's days, and to other and to make others feel good. And don't come blame it on me for getting your shows canceled. It, your shows are your shows. It's your fault, not mine. Another thing both I and Azuchi were clearly seen in our respective episodes and heard, you usually just show your head only in 240p. So wrong my ass. Well, guess what, Azuchi Guardian? Wrong my ass on my part, and and you're right, and Azuchi's and right my ass. So, anyways, I'm um, also trouble speaking to the camera while Azuchi only fuck up at least once. You can't label your time slots either, let alone spare time. Well, guess what, Azuchi? So friggin' what? I'm gonna address more of that later. How exactly do you plan on continuing casual reviews without us anyways? Well, that's a really good question, Azuchi Guardian. Even if you... Uh, that's a really good question, Azuchi Guardian. Of course... I mean, of course I'm going to make sure that I have the right person who can help me edit my series instead of doing the same exact bullcrap you've done for me. With a new video editor, as if we're the failed to mention a new cameraman along with the pal- well, Let me say this, did you even watch Nick's videos? Because you don't even know who Nick Glissetter is, and you haven't even- And I'm- and, and I'm guess- and something tells me that you haven't even watched The Great Gamer Boy fan, Azuchi Guardian. This is that propaganda? I see spilling from your lips. Since it doesn't explain how the series can be salvaged. Well, let me say this, Azuchi Guardian. Based off how I'm going to make this series bigger and better, all, jo all the jokes are going to be clean, all the jokes are going to be relevant, and and all the people working on each episode beginning with this one will all be referred by their real names in the end credits, and also, um, and also, um, and also all memorial honors will relate to the subject matter of each episode. I don't think this new guy can make it better either. Well, um, guess what? Nick, the reason why I, bought, I originally bought Nick to the editor's chair is that at least, unlike you, Azuchi Guardian, who would try to make videos just for the sake of money, Nick, on the other hand, he makes videos just to entertain people, enlighten people's days, and, and make others feel good. That's what he did when I went to school with him. At least he can be thoughtful of people's feelings, even if he may not 
Read them. You sure will be still. Well, guess what? Steal my ass, Azuchi Guardian! I would explain why that would be helping you. I would explain why, but that would be helping you now, wouldn't it? I just want to see what you can pull out of your hat. For it's not a masterpiece, more like a blockbuster reject. Well, guess what, Azuchi Guardian? Blockbuster reject my ass, Azuchi Guardian! And, and and when I and when I do get a work in episode three, you will see that it will be a masterpiece. And once casual reviews and fam was a public apology comes out for you, comes out, you're gonna be sorry, Zuchi Guardian. And one day when it, when the next episode of Casual Reviews with Fam does come out without your involvement, this is a moment where you're gonna be like, Yo Mon, I should've listened to Fair Rimshot or Yo Mon, I should've listened to Teddy Macedo. So anyways, also posting threats against us will get you nowhere. Well, you started it, Azuchi Guardian, with, with, the, with all those threats. Not me. It's a competition, and you torn up the contract anyways. Well, don't blame it on me. It's not my fault. It's your fault. You're the one who made poor choices for the series, not me. Nerf herder. Man, do I plan to do a protest against somebody. Anyways, we edit our current videos. However, we please not not like you, not like, not. However, we please not like you don't trash us on your channel. So if you so if we want if we want to mock you in our videos, we can. Well, if you want people to treat you nice, why can't you treat others nice? Did I ever did I make this to tell you to stop? Well, no. Well, if you want people. To treat you good? Why can't you treat others good? It's just sad that you can't even accept criticism. Is it you got Gosh. No, for you, you'll just ignore us anyway. Give no respect, get no respect. How did Teddy Ballista insult you? Well, he, well, you, you definitely did slander me when you, when, when, when I saw you, when you did, when you did the first six episodes, of Melee Mayhem, you, you, you gave me nothing but big letdowns and big disservices, and oh boy, am I not so happy with those things. See why nobody wants to work for you, Zuchi Guardian? You can't even accept criticism at all. <sighs> I'm sorry, people. It's just well, I can't stand that nerf herder, Zuchi Guardian. On Melee Mayhem, anyway. By making it better than your videos, or by surfing over your career. Well, guess what? Um, you're not doing... Well, if you want to do a better job than me, well, why can't you stop bashing other people? Just leave me alone for once, and just be accepting of the fact that I'm trying to move on, man. But, but you still just can't leave me alone. He only dissed you in episode one, not two. How selfish can you get, Teddy? Well, guess what, Azuchi Guardian? I'm not the one being selfish. You're the one being selfish and careless towards other people's feelings, you sick nerf herder. I guess you want some more. I guess you want some more. Well, guess what? No, I don't. I'll just tell him you said that. Actually, I said I don't. Just leave. ME ALONE, Azuchi Guardian! He might do it again for episode 3, except why do... Don't do it again. Just leave me alone for once, Azuchi Guardian! <sighs> I'm sorry, people. It's just that well, I can't stand all the disrespect I always get from Azuchi Guardian. Why do you care anyway? Well, sometimes as you your guardian, just you need to learn to just leave me alone and give me more space, please. That all I'm trying to ask you nicely, but you still can't listen to me. 
Why are you still subscribed to our channels? And even liked Izuchi's latest video if you said we suck. So to answer your questions, well, well guess what? I'm, I, well, I already unsubscribed to you. Hope you're happy now. But as for the late, why I liked the latest video that I did on that time, well, at least it didn't slander anyone, not even me, that's for sure. Well, now, look, Azuchi Guardian, don't feel like you can't make videos, okay? I don't mind you making videos in all honesty. Just as long as you don't slander me, then it's fine. You can't even waste less time than we do on vlogs. Look, people. We, we used 25 minutes about this in the last episode. Well, you wasted four hours doing such July updates. Who wants to see that? Okay. Now, now you're missing the whole entire point when I do update vlogs. Whenever I do longer update vlogs, I'm not aiming to waste anyone's time at all. If you guys ever see me do an, a longer update vlog like this, well, that's because I have a lot of thing, important things to talk to you people about, including you, Mizuchi Guardian, in case you happen to be watching this. And this is where the worst part kicks in. This is the part that I'm pretty sure that that would have got Hami to get bitter with me. And in response to that, let me say this. How <clears throat> why is Uchi Guardian? Why would you trash talk about my birthday party, about how I played Happy Birthday? You don't even know how how I played that. You don't even know how I played Happy Birthday on the clarinet. And because you did constantly trash talk about how I played Happy Birthday on the clarinet, this is why, this is what led Hami2 to get bitter. Now basically what you did right here, now you just led Hami2 to get bitter with me. Again. <sighs> I'm sorry, people. It's just that I just can't stand um, all the bullcrap that I have to go through when it comes to Zuchi Guardian. Which explains why I've yet to get my re revenge on. Which is why I've yet to do a protest against him back for not just that, but also all the other horrible things he's done. So anyways, enough talk about Izuchi Guardian. Now let's get on with other things I also have to address. Now lately, I've, I've been getting people... Now I noticed a lot of you people... I've been asking me the same. Now I've been getting a lot of concerns regarding to my schedule for casual reviews with Bear Rim Shot right now. Now I'm pretty sure a lot of you people may seem biased about me doing co-reviews in my show. Well, for anyone who may feel concerned about regarding to my schedule regarding casual reviews with Bear Rim Shot, well, I do have great news in which I'm pretty sure a lot of you people. We're all definitely going to feel happy when I say this. All the episodes that I've officially booked in my schedule for right now, at least for this season, will all be solo episodes. It'll be just like the first two episodes where, where I'd be the only person appearing on camera alone. And I'm pretty sure you're all wondering what do I have next after the What is a Public Apology editorial. After I'm done with the What is a Public Apology editorial, I'll be doing my first ever countdown series. I mean, my first ever countdown episode for the series called The Top 11 Dumbest Kingdom Hearts Moments. And no, people, it will not be like what you see coming from a Cine Cinema Sense video where it's everything's wrong with it and there's nothing good to say about it. In fact, when it comes to thing to the Kingdom Hearts franchise, well, I may have some issues. Well, I may have certain issues with the series considering the fact that I grew up lo lo loving watching Disney movies, um, I will admit I can acknowledge all of the good parts it has to offer. Like, for example, one thing about the Kingdom Hearts games that I will always like would be the music. And I, and I can see why a lot of people may like the Kingdom Hearts games. It's all things to, wonderful, to a wonderful soundtrack. 
and the games themselves may have to offer. However, good music just, just doesn't always mean good game or good movie. Of course, you have to have a, when you speak about games, if you're going to do like a Final Fantasy S game, of course, you have, to, if you're going to do something like, let's say, Kingdom Hearts, of course, you have to come up with great ideas. And you have to come up with a, some great stories. Making sure that they're well written, not just by premise, but also by execution as well. So anyways, after I'm done with the, with my top, the one speak by the top 11 Dennis Kingdom Hearts moments, while I will may be alone in the video, there is a possibility I may have I may have a cameo in my video and somebody doing a voiceover, both of whom I unfortunately cannot say who, for personal reasons. As I do want to keep it as a surprise, and plus, if I did reveal, then Azuchi's going to humiliate me for revealing those two things, for those two people doing those things. So anyways, after I'm done with the top 11 Dumbest Kingdom Hearts moments comes, I'm going to be going back to reviews with Disney Infinity 2.0, then I'm going to be doing an editorial discussing Blue Sky Studios to see to to debate on whether or not it's as good as what that fell in the coat says. Well, turns out, in my opinion, it actually is as good as what that fell in the coat says it would be. And after the Blue Sky editorial comes my Disney Infinity 3.0 review, and then after. After my Disney Finney 3 point of review comes another countdown, only this time it'll be called the Top 10 Franchises That Should Join LEGO Dimensions. Originally it was supposed to be called the Top 10 Franchises That I Want to See Join LEGO Dimensions. But to avoid getting any scrutiny coming from my good friend Capricone, I would might as well have to change the name from the top 10 franchises I want to see join LEGO Dimensions all the way to the top 10 franchises that should join LEGO Dimensions. Then after that countdown is done comes my review of the Star Wars Battlefront remake and yes people I will do some episodes related to Star Wars. That's for sure. And then and then, and then of course comes my first ever Halloween episode for the series, being another countdown. Only this time it being the top, only this time being the top thirty-one greatest Disney villains, not from Walt Disney Animation Studios. But in this case, it would be more like it would act more like a sequel to Animats's top ten other Disney villains countdown. And before I get before I get any lawsuits coming from someone affiliated with Electric Dragon Productions or Animat for that matter, and no people, when I do my top eleven, I mean my I mean my top thirty one greatest Disney villains not from Walt Disney Animation Studios. It, it's not I can tell you all for a fact that it's not to outbash the top ten other Disney villains countdown. Okay, it's just that when when you're watching Animat's top ten other Disney villains countdown. There's, you may find at least some Disney villains you may feel happy to see, and then there's always going to be at least some villains that you may want to see ha appear in the list, but unfortunately did not. And when I do my top 31 greatest Disney villains not from Walt Disney Animation Studios countdown, I'm definitely going to make sure I have very different Disney villains, including, which, which wouldn't, which include villains from many different forms of Disney you can ever think of outside of the Walt Disney Animated Canon, including Disney Toon Studios, Pixar Animation Studios, live action movies, TV shows, video games, comics, and yes, people, I will also include some villains from Saban, Marvel, and Lucasfilm, as well as Studio Ghibli for an added bonus. So hope you hope you Ghibli fans are all happy to see that you're going to see some Studio Ghibli villains join the countdown. However, there will be at least three villains that that thankfully made it in 
the top in Animax's top ten other Disney villains count. And we may also see appear in my top thirty one greatest Disney villains not from Walt Disney Animation Studios countdown. All of whom I would not say who. I almost forgot that you would also can you will also be able to see some villains from some of the, from some of the shorts they've made making the list as well. And then last but not and then of course after I'm done with my top thirty one greatest Vill Disney villains not from Walt Disney Animated Studios countdown comes my first ever Christmas episode for the series being a review of the live action Grinch movie. And then once my Grinch review is done, comes season two, which I'd rather get into later. Get into it, which I'll be more than happy to talk more about at another time. So anyways, another thing I also have to address would be regarding to the confusions I always get between epic battles and epic rap battles of history. Now, over the years, I've always been getting people who I'm not going to say any names who would often get confused between epic battles and epic rap battles of history. But let me say this, that epic rap, that, that epic battles and epic rap battles of history are both technically two different stories. The same way of how Star Wars would be to Star Trek. They're both different, two, two different universes. Epic rap battles history would focus more on rap battles between two historical figures, whereas epic battles would be a, cross, a huge crossover that would satirize not just the entire world of pop culture, but also it would feature me and people that I, that I would have personally known in my lifetime as well. So anyways, another thing I also have to address would be regarding to the animated movie Food Fight. Now I bet you're all wondering what about Food Fight I have to talk about. Well, um, now, I've been, now my, my all-time favorite reviewer, Animat, did ask me a really good question on whether or not I've ever seen the movie Food Fight. Well, in all honesty, yes. Yes, I have. Okay, I'm going to be honest with myself. Look at the movie Food Fight. Sure, I may not have seen the whole entire movie, but I've seen enough for it for me, for me to be able to form my own opinion. And I have to say, it sucks. It is definitely as bad as what the nostalgia critic says it would be. And when I first heard the news that that anime would do a classic reviews of Food Fight, I just now when anime did get a finally review of Food Fight, all thanks to a Patreon request he got from a fellow subscriber of mine, Chrissy Trotter. By the way, hi Chris, and thank in case you're watching this and thing. Well, hi, Chris, in case if you're watching this, and thanks for subscribing to my channel. So, anyways, um, so anyways, um, when it comes to the movie, food, when Animat gave Food Fight the Animat seal of garbage, that is no, I'd be, that is no surprise, that is no surprise to me at all. I'm not, you know, when Animat did get to review Food Fight at all, it definitely doesn't surprise me about the fact that it would ever get the Animat seal of garbage. Considering the fact that it's got a terrible story, crappy animation, unlikable characters that are just nothing more than cheap ripoffs of characters I loved from my childhood, and all that kind of stuff. Alright, if I had anything positive I can say about Food Fight, well, I will give it two things. The first positive thing I can say about Food Fight is that at least the filmmakers were smart enough not to let it fall under the hands of Video Brain Quido, and at least, and at least they didn't let it fall under the hands of Harvey Weinstein. Thankfully, now I bet you're all wondering what would be what can possibly go wrong if you let a film like let's say Food Fight fall under the hands of either Video Brain Quido or Harvey Weinstein. Now with the case of Video Brain Quido, they would typically make nothing but terrible movies by making nothing but terrible cheap knockoff films. 
They even made a terrible cheap knockoff of Ratatouille called Ratatouille. And if you're looking for a good movie that's similar to Ratatouille, go watch Flushed Away instead. Sure, it may bear some similarities with Ratatouille, but at least you have, at least you have people, at least you have people that understand the world of animation when, to work on the film. And when and when speaking about Harvey Weinstein, when speaking about his his trend of animated movies. Typically not that good. And what's not so good about Harvey Weinstein's track record of animated features? Well, let me give you some examples. Now the first off would be, of course, Princess Mononoke. While there, while I have no doubt in Princess Mononoke being a good film, period, it's a shame that, well, when, well, um, when well when print well um well it's a shame of how well when um when that the company when Miramax when Harvey Weinstein via Miramax did their English dub on the on this one Studio Ghibli film being Princess Mononoke. It's a shame that it ended up being a major box office failure. Not only that, but also because of, it fell under the hands of Harvey Weinstein, it also explains why it, it didn't get, it, it, it basically got to be one of those animated films that sadly never got an Academy, sadly never got nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture. At least over here in America, that is, which makes it disappointing. Which explains why all other Studio Ghibli films that Disney would do would be which explains why all the other Studio Ghibli films, including Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, The Cat Returns, Ponyo, and The Secret World of Arrietty, as well as The Wind Rises, would all be done either, most likely either by Walt Disney Pictures or sometimes Touchstone Pictures. So anyways, um, this is the moment where all other Studio Ghibli films that Disney would do would, be released, would not only be released under Walt Disney Pictures, but also either Walt Disney Pictures or Touchstone Pictures, but also the people who would handle the English, uh, Disney would, who would handle the English up for most of their films there would be none other than the director of Toy Story himself, John Lasseter. And another, and another animated film that, that, that tried, that was supposed to get, that deserved to get nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture, but sadly didn't, would be Chicken Run. And because of the fact that both Princess Mononoke and Chicken Run both did not get nominated for, for an Academy Award for Best Picture, which explains why when Studio Ghibli did their next movie, Spirit Away, it got to win the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature back in 2002. Not only that, but also um, when DreamWorks did their next animated feature being Shrek, and when Ardman did their next animated feature being Walls and Gromit, The Curse of the Rare Rabbit, which all which which which, which, which would also be Ardman's next project with under with under the DreamWorks belt. Both Shrek and Walls and Gromit, The Curse of the Rare Rabbit would both win an Academy Award for Best Animated Feature in both 2001 and 2005, respectively. So, anyways. And the, another Studio Ghibli film, I mean, I, I mean, another Harvey Weinstein animated film, the, another animated film that Harvey Weinstein would also have issues doing would be, of course, you got The Thief and the Cobbler. Considering the fact, well, when, when, when Harvey Weinstein did The Thief and the Cobbler through Miramax, it ended up being a box office failure, not just because of the fact that it was released during the Disney Renaissance, but also made a lot of Disney fans feeling like as if they were watching a cheap knockoff of Disney's Aladdin. And then of course you have Freddy's FR7, not sure why people bash that movie. So anyways, um, 
And then, of course, you got the least awful one being hoodwinked. While sure, it may have had bad animation, but at least it managed to have a great story, a likable, likable characters, great humor, and it even ended up being a major box office success. And you have people that like to wink like myself. And then, of course, you have the sequel to Hoodwinked, Hoodwinked 2, Hood vs. Evil, in which ended up being a major failure both critically and financially. So much so that it would even be named, not only would it get the, the first ever Animath Zeal of Garbage, but also, but also it would be named as, but also, Animat would name, name it as the worst animated movie of 2011. And then, of course, you have Escape from Planet Earth, which did get a lot of backlash, even though it ironically ended up being a box office set. Maybe not enough to be like Hoodwinged, but yeah. And when it comes to Hoodwinged, I mean, when it comes to Escape from Planet Earth, it's also another animated film that's known for getting critically bashed as well. So much so that it would even be number two in anima, the number two worst animated film of 2013 in Animax's top five best and worst animated films behind Clyde of the Chance of Meatballs 2. Now, you guys can say whatever you like about both Escape from Planet Earth and Clyde of the Chance of Meatballs 2. I personally, you can say what you will about Escape from Planet Earth. I thought Escape from Planet Earth is the, the worst animated movie of 2013. At least in my opinion, that is. So anyways, the fact that... <clears throat> so anyways, the fact that Food Fight was not made by Video Brinquito and the fact that, um, that, it's made by, that it's not made by Harvey Weinstein but instead would be produced by Threshold, the same company that would make all those Lego Star Wars TV specials doesn't stop the fact that it doesn't stop the fact that it's still well, the fact that that it's not from Video Binquito and the fact and also the fact that it, it, that the filmmakers didn't let it fall under the hands of Harvey Weinstein and the fact that it's made by by Threshold, the same animation studio that would make all those. Lego Star Wars TV specials definitely doesn't stop the fact that it's very bad. Think of like with Strange Magic, for example. Yes, yeah, sure. Sure, maybe from the same guy that, sure, that brought us Star Wars and Indiana Jones. However, it doesn't stop the fact that it's still a bad movie. And take a look at Cars 2. Shh. Take a look at the entire Cars franchise. Sure, it may come from the same minds that brought us. Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Ratatouille, Wally, -E, Up, Brave, Inside Out, and The Good Dinosaur. However, it doesn't stop the fact that there's still bad, or in this case, mediocre movies. And also take a look at what, and take a look at, and think of also like the Chicken Little as well. Sure, it may come from the same animation studio behind films with the likes of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Pinocchio, Dumbo, Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Sleeping Beauty, Little Mermaid, Being the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, The Princess and the Frog, Tangled, Frozen, Rick and Ralph, and Big Hero Six. However, it doesn't. It didn't stop the fact that that Chicken Little would still be a mediocre movie. And take a look at Mars Needs Moms. Sure, it may come from the same director that brought us an American Tale Five of Ghost West, We're Back at Dinosaur Story, Balto, The Prince of Egypt, and various other DreamWorks films as well as being produced by the same guy who would also previously direct films such as Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Back and the entire Back to the Future trilogy. However, it doesn't, don't speak about Mars, these moms, 
Mm, so take a look, take a look with Marzi's Moms. Sure, maybe from the same director that brought us an American Tale Five of Ghost West. We're back at Dinosaur Story, Balto and the Prince of Egypt as well, as produced by the same guy who would be best known in directing films with the likes of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the entire Back to the Future trilogy, um, oh, right, The Polar Express, and a Christmas, and his version of Christmas Carol, the one with Jim Carrey. However, it doesn't stop the fact that, that, it, that Mars Needs Moms is still a mediocre movie. You get the idea. So anyways, um, and, and I also have to address regarding to when I brought up the no cuts thing. That's used in a lot of Studio Ghibli films when it, when it does get to re be released outside of Japan. Now when I brought up the, when I cited no cuts as one of the things that discouraged me in name changing for products like Epic Battles, I've been getting some misunderstandings thinking that I won't consider that I won't consider making any cuts or changes. Well technically well, well technically I can make some changes in cuts. Well it depends. Well I would only do cuts or changes at the right time. So in speaking about like let's just say epic battles there are some, for every character, both Dante and I get to include, regardless of its real life or fictional, um, for every character, we get that into big battles, there are some changes, changes we can consider making, and then there are some changes we can't consider making. Well, that's because in a typical crossover, there are changes that, that are okay with, that are okay to make, and then there are certain changes that are not okay to make as well. And when speed by name changing, it's basically the one thing that is never okay, that should never be okay to do when doing a crossover, regardless if you do it as a movie, or TV show, or, or, or TV episode, or TV special, a book, comic book, or even a video game or whatever. One does not simply change the name of a particular character. However, you make caricature a particular character in a different style of animation. And um, another change that's also okay to do in a crossover would be, of course, um, changing certain voice actors. Well, when we speak of changing certain voice actors, that would definitely be more understandable. As if you're gonna bring in certain characters in particular, like, let's just say you're going to do a crossover that would feature any classic Disney characters. You know, we're talking more like the ones from the Walt Disney era. We're talking like the pre-Black Cauldron days, to be more precise. As well as any character whose original voice actor is now dead. This is the moment where you, have, you would be unable to bring in the original voice actors, but instead bring in... Bring in someone else as long as you know it's the right voice actor for that particular character. Well, and the same thing, like, let's just say if you want to bring in a character from a Dr. Seuss book or Garfield or whatever, of course, of course, you, would, you wouldn't be able to bring in the original, you wouldn't always be able, you can't always bring in the original voice actors typically, as sometimes they can be alive. Others, they're more likely dead, unfortunately, whether we all like it or not. So anyways, um, and also, um, there are some, and when speaking about the next episode of Casual Reviews of Bam Shot was a public apology, there are certain changes that I have been making when speaking about this episode, considering how troubling the production has been in which I'll be more than happy to address another time in another video. Possibly so anyways, um and, and another thing I also have to address is regarding to um something that I've previously addressed in my last two update vlogs. And it's regarding, of course, the fact that well 
would be, of course, regarding to the fact that, um, now, I don't think I'll touch, I'll touch what we were going to when I brought up porn. Now, when I brought up the word porn in my last update vlog, I wasn't trying to do it as a joke, okay? When I did bring up the word porn, I didn't for an educational purpose. Think of, like, the same reason why I said the N-word back in March 2016. It wasn't intentionally to offend anyone. It was basically more of an educational purpose. But what, I'm, but what I was trying to do when I brought up the word porn is basically, I, I'm just trying to make sure you people understand, I want you people to get a major understanding on, on how crossover media should be treated. As when it comes to the, when it comes to crossovers, they can be artistic. I mean, when you, and when you do get to do a crossover in any form of media, at least you can be creative with it. Just as you would when you do, like, let's say, a sequel or a prequel or a remake or even an adaptation or even a spinoff or even if you did something original. So anyways, um, I also have to address, now when, this is the, I'm, now when I did my, after I did my last monthly update vlog, I've been getting a lot of hate from my, I've been getting some backlash thinking that I would, I've been receiving this understanding thing that I'll do some sort of things to other people once again. Technically, I don't do that. So anyways, um... So anyways, um... Then, and another reason I bought a porn is because, well... Um, back when I was going to school at Westbrook, there were certain staff members who used to, used to treat all of crossover media as porn. I bet you're all wondering who from Westbrook can ever possibly treat crossovers as porn. Well, of course, you got Mr. Ben, then you have Mr. Lefemina, then you have Dr. Snyder, then you got Mr. Agaseo, then you got Ms. Brett, and then of course you got Ms. Helen. All of whom are being nothing but major frauds right here. And speaking of which, um, my mom did once inform me about of how that Miss Ellen, my last social work at Westbrook, did try to tell me about of how that that not only are they willing to learn about epic battles, but also that, um, how can I put this? Oh, right. But also that I also received word about of how that some concerns I got like let's just say when I incorporate some real life personalities into epic battles. Okay, well in response to that, okay. Now I appreciate now Miss Ellen, in case if you're watching this, I appreciate that you're willing to learn more about epic battles, I will say. However, in regards to the concerns I used to always get from you guys regarding to the so real life personalities despite incorporating Izzy into epic battles, okay. And I think you all should feel relieved when I say this. That just because I made Izzy Natkin a villain, that that technically doesn't make all real-life personalities villains at all. When speaking about a real-life personality, just like with a fictional character, a real-life personality, just like with a tune, a real-life personality can be either good or evil. When Speaking about incorporating Westbrook people into epic battles, I originally intended to um to make not just to a bad guy, but also make everyone else a good guy. However, due to the fact that I've thought some people at Westbrook overreacting, this is why I've had certain people there be heroes and certain people there to be villains similar to what already happened back when I was in Andrus. And now, time to get into my final concern for this update vlog. Well, um, now, now I, I've been getting a lot of questions. I also got concerns regarding to these of Westbrook people. Now, if you're somebody who, from Westbrook watching this, I'm pretty sure you're definitely going to wonder why I would ever consider adding in Westbrook people to epic battles. 
Now, the reason why I would ever consider adding Westbrook people into Epic Files is because, well, no. When, when I, when I, just for, when I, when I, when I was about to officially go to school, I was, go to school, I Westbrook, when I did get to go to school there, I just knew that I had to include some people from Westbrook into Epic Files, which, which also explains the same reason why I would ever consider including people from St. Chris. Well, when I did get to go, when I did first go to school at St. Chris, I just knew that I've had to include some St. Chris people into Epic Battles. And also, it's the same reason why I would ever consider adding in Wreck-It Ralph characters into Epic Battles. Um, when Wreck-It Ralph just first came out, and considering the fact that I've had characters, I've had various Disney characters, mostly the animated ones, as well as some video game characters are bringing, I just knew that when wreck -It Ralph first came out, I just knew that I had to add in characters from wreck -It Ralph into Epic Battles, and, and it's also the same reason why I would ever consider adding in Frozen characters into Epic Battles, is basically, when I first heard the news that when, I, when Frozen first came out, and considering the fact that it would be proclaimed as a Disney classic, I just knew that I had to consider adding in Frozen characters into Epic Battles, and it's also the same reason why I would ever consider adding in characters from Big Hero 6, considering the fact that I've had not just various Disney characters to appear, but also characters from Marvel Comics with the likes of Spider-Man, X-Men, The Avengers, and Fantastic Four, I just knew that I've had to include characters from Big Hero 6. And it's also the same reason why I would have yet to include characters from Zootopia and Moana into Epic Battles, is basically, when Zootopia and Moana when Zootopia first came out, I just knew that I had to include characters from Zootopia into Epic Battles. And by the time when Moana first comes out, I would just know, I would just knew for myself that I had to include characters from Moana. And it's also the same reason why I would consider adding in characters from Brave. Basically, when I first heard, the, by the time when Brave first came out, considering the fact that I've already included not just various Disney princesses into Epic Battles, but also characters from other Pixar properties with the likes of Toy Story and Monsters Inc. into Epic Battles. I just knew that I had to add in characters from Brave into Epic Battles. Same thing with, with Inside Out and The Good Dinosaur, as well as Monsters University. It was basically, I just knew that I had to include characters from those films into Epic Battles. And the same thing by the time when films with the likes of... Same thing when Toy Story by the time when, 20, when Toy Story 4 was comes out as well. And it's also the same reason why I would include characters from games released either on a PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Wii U, PS Vita, or, or 3DS with the likes of, of Super Smash Bros. 4, Yoshi's Whirly World, or, or basically just any of those games. I, I just knew that I had to include elements in those games as well. And, and one more thing I like to address before I go is this. Now after finishing up watching this, I know what a lot of you are probably gonna be like, oh great, another up a longer update vlog. Okay, okay, now look people. When I do longer update vlogs like this, I'm not aiming to waste anyone's time at all. If you guys ever see me do longer update vlogs, that's because I have a lot of important things to talk about. So that's all I have to say for this update vlog. Just keep watching my videos, and, uh, 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 and hopefully, keep all I can say is keep watching my videos as well as as well as be sure. To, to spread it around the internet. Be sure to share my videos. Share it around, all around. Be sure to, to keep watching my videos and hopefully, and, 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 sh and hopefully be sure to share me around social media sites. Facebook me, Twitter me, Tumblr me, I mean, tweet me, plus me, um, email me, or do whatever you guys have to do on these social media sites and it'll be great if I can get up to 100 subscribers Thank you, and I hope you all have, and for anyone 
who's still in school. I wish you all the best of luck on your first day of school. This is Teddy Macedo, a.k.a. Bay Rimshot, signing out.